Hey, I'm here with Aubrey Graham, a.k.a. Drake. He's a star of Degrassi and an up-and-coming rap artist. How are you today? Good, man. How you doing? I've been moving calm, don't start no trouble with me. Shout out to, um, Nico, Oliver, 4040. Trying to take the wave from a nigga. Aubrey is a total character. You see him strut into the building and, you know, his walk, his demeanor announces that he's here. You underestimated greatly. Most number ones ever. How long did it really take me? Ace. Oh my god! And Drake just stand for do right and kill everything. There's a lot of critics out there not taking you seriously based on the fact that you start on Degrassi. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can judge me if you want. That that's that's cool. Like sooner or later though, it's going to be inevitable that your girlfriend's going to be playing it, your mom's going to want to listen to it, your brother's going to be like, can you get Drake to give me an autograph? So, I mean, you might as well just get with it right now. Aubrey Drake Graham was born on October 24th, 1986 in Toronto, Canada. That boy Drake pretty much grew up into music. His father, Dennis Graham, was a drummer for the legendary rock and roll star Jerry Lee Lewis. His uncle, Larry Graham, played bass for Sly and the Family Stone. Hell, even his grandmother used to babysit Aretha Franklin, bruh. It's funny how when asked about his identity, Drake said, at the end of the day, I consider myself a black man because I'm more immersed in black culture than any other. Being Jewish is kind of a cool twist. It makes me unique. It was when Drake was at Forest Hill Collegiate Institute where there was a kid in his class whose father was an agent. That kid's dad would say, if there's anyone in your class that makes you laugh, have them audition for me. And after Drake did that audition, that guy became Drake's agent. Shortly after that, Drake landed a role on the Canadian teen drama, Degrassi The Next Generation, where he would play the role of Jimmy Brooks. Madam, your mother craves a word with you. Ashley, you don't come in for another half page. Ash wants to have sex. Man, you're gonna get some? You got horseshoes up your butt. Yeah, cool, huh? Sometimes named Wheelchair Jimmy, a basketball star who becomes permanently wheelchair bound when he's shot by a classmate. Classic moment, fam. He would drop out of high school to focus on acting. He would appear in a total of 100 episodes between 2001 and 2008. Although while still acting and being on Degrassi, he started to dabble into the hip hop scene with the release of his first mixtape, Room for Improvement, in 2006. My style is very Tennessee, mixed with some Terry Kennedy. People barely remember me from back in the day. Chances are, most of the days you was lying around. I made money, and that's why these girls eyeing me down. Getting down tonight if they say you're cutting. A lot of dudes in my city, they ain't saying nothing. Achieving a modest amount of sales of approximately 6,000 copies. Let me show you what it is. I was birthed up top. I was raised at the bottom of the map where the girls all thick. And the hottest niggas rap if you're looking for the good. And we got him in a trap like, ooh, we took it from white snakes to Lou, we. This metaphor might sound a little confusing, but y'all don't really know me if you knew me. I done come a long way from a day's end, other hotels that I stayed in. He then followed that up with another mixtape in 2007 under his own October's very own imprint, Comeback Season. Damn. I done walked in here, looking like the motherfucking man of the year. It was worth it, it was all worth it. And by the time I understand that I ain't perfect, I wish you could have seen me back at high school. Backpack, gray range, black act, put a half a stack out. This included Drake's first hit single and music video, Replacement Girl with Trey Songs. What's going on, MTV E2? It's your boy D R A K E, that's me. You know how the story goes, and I'm here with none other than your boy, the Prince of the V, Trey Songs. Ow. Yeah, two up, two down. We on the set of replacement, girl, man. From to VA making it connect. You know what it is. My first video it feels. I'm feeling a lot of emotions. I'm feeling. I was nervous at the beginning. You know, definitely. Get, it, I, it's different because I've been acting. So getting on camera and like trying to look cool is like a whole different story. You know, it's not the grassy. It's, it's it's another ball game. I mean, you gotta look cool. You can't. There's so many ways to look corny in a music video. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if you're 
you're acting, you're either good or you're not good. You're either natural or you're not natural. This is like, you either have it or you don't. I'm enjoying it. I think I'm doing okay. How did I even get that to happen? Trey songs, I don't know. Me and Trey linked up through a gentleman by the name of T Slack. And um, Trey's manager, Delante. And we, um, I sent Trey the record. And I was like, you know, I hope he likes it. So, speaking of Trey songs though, I want to give that man some credit because it doesn't really get talked about enough how much he really helped Drake elevate to stardom back in the day. Drake was even willing to sign to Trey songs back then. He was even vouching for Drake to executives and trying to get his music video on 106 in part. I actually met Drake in Atlanta. I was living in my manager at the time. I was living in his house and he had an unfinished basement. It was cold as hell down there because we didn't have heat in the basement. And Drake came in, he had a Montclair jacket on. I was like, who's this light skin guy? <laughs> you know, and I took Drake to many executives and a lot of people said no. Wow. Like, I had to fight to get Replacement Girl on BT 106 Park. Like, in a time where I wasn't even Trey Songz yet. Like, we had arguments about Drake wanting, like, you can't sign to me. Like, at that time, I felt like me and my label weren't even in a good place, whereas though they fully believed in my potential. So, big shout out to Trey Songz, for real. Yeah. Now the year is 2008, and the producers of Degrassi took apart the cast, leaving Drake in a weird position where he said he felt like he had to get a day job or something, because being a rapper didn't really pick up yet. But eventually he would receive an unexpected phone call from none other than the GOAT himself, Lil Wayne. How did you guys connect? Because you all are friends, and yeah. he's been a big influence on, you know, Lil Wayne and I are like this. I know, you, you I know, know, that's, that's, your, Drake, I know right? that's your dog. That's, yeah, that's, your, that's, that's my your dog. Guy. We were introduced through another gentleman uh, from Houston. His name is Jazz Prince. He found me on MySpace and loved my music on MySpace. And uh, he was like, man, I know Lil Wayne, and I'm going to play him your music one day. And I was just like, yeah, right. You know, yeah. like, you, know, you never really... I didn't buy it at first, and then, um, and I'll never forget, you know, one day I was getting, and we, we started, you know, we formed a relationship, and we used to talk and chop it up, and um, chop it up is like, uh, you know, converse. Thank um, you. <laughs> I kind of figured that yeah. out, but. And so, yeah, we, we would talk, and he called me one day, and I was in the barbershop getting my hair cut, and he was like, uh, I was like, Brr, and the phone rang, and I picked it up, and it was like, yo, and I was like, uh, you probably know that voice. I was like, I was like, uh, hello? I was like, yo, what's up? I was like, this doesn't sound like my friend and he's like yo what's up it's Wheezy and it was you know it ended up being it ended up being Wayne he was like I'm starting this thing called Young Money and I'd really love for you to be a part of it so I want to fly you out to Houston and meet you and he did just that the day after and, and that formed our relationship and I was like this quiet kid in the corner of the bus you yeah. know while everything was going on around me and the Carter 3 was just I think it was like maybe two or three weeks away from coming out and uh, what a time what, yeah. a time. What, a time. What, what, what? what a time for real. I'm sure that shit was a crazy learning experience for him, bro. Just imagine being on that tour bus when Wheezy was at his peak. Fire. Towards the end of this year of 2008 was actually when I discovered Drake for the first time. I had already seen a couple episodes of Degrassi, and I remember going on hiphopearly.com like I used to do every day back then. Yo, if you remember this website, you a real one. And I remember seeing the song Ransom, and I was like, okay, Lil Wayne featuring Drake. Hmm, let's see how this sounds. It's me and Weezy like a mouth full of hot peppers, black Ferrari with the red seats, I call it playing checkers. Bruh, I was like, this shit is gas. Then it hit me like, hold up. I googled Drake and all I would see is Drake Bell from Drake and Josh fam. I'm like, bruh, nah, hold up. Let me see the Degrassi cast. And sure enough, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. it's fucking Jimmy. And this is when I think Drake really started to be like, okay, now shit is getting popping. Here we go. I'm still fly. Yeah. I'm sky high. And I dare anybody to try cut my wings. Uh, I want this shit forever, man. Yeah, never mind, never mind. I'm shutting shit down in the mall. We so strong. And of course, the legendary best I ever had would drop in the beginning of 2009, which literally changed his career forever. Man, I say the same thing every single time. I say you the fucking best. Hey. I miss these days so much, man. For me, it was my freshman year of high school. Things just felt way more happier. It was kind of just Facebook or MySpace at the time, rocking a sidekick or your cheap ass Walgreens phone with limited minutes, coming home, hitting up your friends on AIM while playing Call of Duty, rocking an iPod Classic, or burning CDs to make your own mixtape. I mean. Let me stop, bro. Yeah, I don't know. Shit was just different. And speaking of CDs, Drake would drop his third mixtape in February of 2009, which was so good you could probably call it an album with So Far Gone. Hey, she just stuck in Houston, Atlanta, Vegas. Houston, Atlanta, Vegas. 
Vegas I'm telling you I'm Polish when I'm down in the winter And I'll be riding rims with my tires in the thinner I got the big unstoppable I love females that like to wear their toes out Oh shit, my bad, wrong person <laughs> They be staring at the money like it's unfamiliar So Far Gone was a pretty big success as it debuted at number 5 on the Billboard 200 receiving some pretty decent review scores and during the middle of this year he would sign to Young Money and for those who remember, 2009 was really the year of Young Money, bro. I'm Wayne and um, I have nothing to do with Young Money not, not a thing and, um, and I'm just trying to hold on I'll let everybody introduce themselves because they got voices, hold on What's going on? Uh, go by the name of uh. It's I go okay, by the name. I go by the name of Drake, okay, Jimmy Valentino, Jersey okay, Drake Rogers, you Young you Angel. Know, you know what it is? Yeah. This is song we got called Every Girl. Let's go. Uh huh. Uh huh. I like a long hair, thick red bow. Every girl. Oh, that was your girl. I thought I recognized. Ooh, baby. I also remember like it was yesterday when Drake fell on stage while performing with Wayne and had to get surgery and all. Not that that really matters or anything, but just felt like mentioning. In September of this year, Drake would drop the So Far Gone EP. It featured five songs from So Far Gone and two new tracks, with one of them being a top 10 to 15 Drake track in my opinion, Fear. Uh, we up in Barney's going dumb again Yes, it's young money, we're S.O.D. money gang Trizzy Take yourself a picture when I'm standing at the mound Man, I swear it's going down And you just stuck standing there, but I'm gonna need you to say something, baby Say, say something, baby Let me feel fall over your skin Last name ever, first name greatest. Like a sprained ankle, boy, I ain't nothing to play with. It's kind of true when Wheezy was like, And we gon' be alright if we put Drake on every day. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but back in these days, bruh, I couldn't wait to come home to listen to these songs and just play some Modern Warfare 2, bruh. Those lobbies, pfft, these kids would never understand. You a homo, dude? Make it funny, you dickhead. Make it funny, you motherfucker. You look like a loser right now. You just proceed using your fucking evil eyes, you stupid motherfucker. That's what the fuck you are. You look like a fucking evil eyes. You using your eyes, you faggot. You have my dick in your ass. Anyways. So that's two Grammys, two Billboard top Grammy tens, nominations. two Grammy nominations. Sorry, two Grammy nominations. Grammys, Grammys to come, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's make that clear. Not yet. Not being greedy. Grammys to come. Um, collaborate with everybody from Jay Z, Mary J. Blige, Kanye, Alicia Keys, Rihanna. Now the year is 2010, and this is the year that Drake really took off, fam. Whether that's right, I won't ever know. Uh, okay, away we go. Only thing we have on. What am I doing? Oh yeah, that's right, I'm doing me. Refuse to be forgotten. Series attitude, champagne bottle life. Nothing ever changes, so tonight is like tomorrow night. Show me a good, show me a good time. Oh, yeah. I think New York City would fucking love it if you gave them just, just one more. New York City, do y'all want one more? Bruh. 
and that's not even all the bangers off this tape. Thank Me Later released on June 15, 2010, selling 447,000 copies first week, debuting at number one on the billboards. I remember Find Your Love, Miss Me, Fancy, like all these tracks being everywhere in the summer of 2010, bro. That shit was crazy. And during this time, Lil Wayne was locked up. And when he said this, Damn, I've been gone to November. But fuck it, I ain't tripping. I know Drizzy gon' kill him. Like, where's the lies? <laughs> Despite Thank Me Later being a massive success and it sounds phenomenal, during this time Drake even stated, Thank Me Later was a rushed album, he told BBC Radio. I didn't get to take the time that I wanted on that record. I rushed a lot of songs and sonically didn't get to sit with the record and say, okay, well maybe I should change this verse. Once it was done, it was done. That's why my new album is called Take Care, because I get to take my time this go round. Y'all got some legends, man. I'm honored to be on the stage in front of y'all. Can we do one more before I go? Let's go! 2011 is the year that I think Drake really found his sound and his identity. Drake at this point was starting to feel more comfortable and confident with every new track. And I'm not even talking about Take Care yet. 2011 includes so many memories for me, bro. Songs like Riding around the city, plastic cup of Henny, find a nigga like me, truth be told I don't know many. I'm really trying to make it more than what it is, cause everybody dies but not everybody lives. How long? Trust these shoes. Oh, 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 excuse me if I say a couple things that I don't mean. Oh shit, damn, my bad, that's Big Soldier. And I'm only getting older, somebody should have told you I'm on one. Yeah, do it for the realest niggas in the fucking game right now, she will. This that slum dog, millionaire, Bollywood flowing up. So clearly in 2011, he kept his foot on the gas, and the steam was getting hotter and hotter for his next album. And when this shit came out, man, almost every lyric from each song was on everyone's Facebook status at one point, especially Marvin's Room. Fuck that nigga that you love so bad. Take Care was finally released on November 15, 2011, to massive praise. I don't know what Entertainment Weekly was smoking that day, but it debuted at number one and sold 631,000 copies first week. The album is already certified six times platinum as of 2019, so I can only imagine now. The album is a literal definition of a classic and has nothing but amazing songs on it with my three favorites probably being Headlines, Shot For Me, and Practice. That's just something they know. They know, they know, they know. Yeah, I'm the reason why you always getting faded. Take a shot for me. You can even call me daddy, give you someone that look up to and my girls from the 504, need to drop it right now. And I know there's a lot of people who claim that The Weeknd wrote like almost half of it, but that was quickly denied by Drake and his best friend Oliver Forty as well. Drake came back at a fan who said that, and Drake said, Abel, which is The Weeknd, co-wrote on Shot For Me and Practice, obviously was featured on Crew Love and The Ride and That's It. There's 20 songs on that album, Don't Try Me. While 40 said, It's a common misconception. I made that whole album. I saw Abel maybe two days. I was in there for like a year. So somebody is lying. I don't know. But either way, it doesn't really matter. The album to me is timeless. Chris Brown right. and Drake. The club, that, the drama that went down in yeah. the club, bottles being thrown, so on and so forth. Do, do these cats really need to touch each other? You know what I'm saying? I don't think then so. the, the Twitter gang banging and you yeah. know. Yeah, I, I think it's crazy. I, I mean, regardless if it's actually over the girl or just disrespect between right. the two, they, they need to, you know, they could cool that down. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like before, you know, it turns into something else, and they're gonna see what it ends out because it's gonna end up lawsuits flying and all, all kind yeah, of. Yeah, man. Trust me. I don't get involved. Me and him don't see eye to eye, so it's gonna be what you it and is. Drake or you and the lawyer? No, me and Drake. You know, I don't really try to talk about him when I'm around her. Oh, you <laughs> yeah. don't talk about I just lay the pipe. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> for the media and, like, for any media outlet that listens to this interview, like, don't ask me shit about that man when I come up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and leave that man alone, you know? Stop preying on his insecurities, man. Because, you know, his insecurities are the fact that I make better music than him, that I'm more popping than him, 
And that at one point in life, you know what I'm saying, the woman that he loves fell into my lap. I did what a real nigga would do and treated her with respect. So she doesn't, she's not up there talking down on me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And all, all those things combined, you know, create an individual that comes up to your radio station and, and, and is just going to, you know, do dumb shit. But it's like, it shouldn't be about tearing that man down. It shouldn't be about wanting to see me and him tear each other down. Like, we have an issue. And it's either mm -hmm. going to drag out or, or maybe in 10 years we'll laugh about it over drinks. But just let us solve that shit. Because it's not me and Kendrick. It's not me and Ho. It's you're not, not you in get, common. It's not even you in common. Yeah, you're not going to get anything yeah. out of it. Like, no, yeah. I don't want to hear that man rap. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to hear me rap against him. I'm a, you know, like, I really do this shit. Like, mm -hmm. that's not, you're not even going to get anything out of it. So I just, like, I just urge people, man, to just, you know, like, and when I say people, I mean, like, media. Like, just leave that shit alone, man. Just leave yeah. that man alone, man. Let it, let him put out that whatever Project X or whatever that shit he's working on. And I'm going to just do, you know, I'm going to put yeah. out this real shit for the people. Like, and that's it. So, clearly, Rihanna got in between Breezy and Drizzy. And they wouldn't really fuck with each other again until years later. But for 2012, Drake was just cruising, enjoying the fruits of his labor as everyone was still bumping that Take Care. Along with a couple fire features. Back when that finagle reached, it was for the weapon. Nowadays, niggas reach just to set a record. Real niggas say word. You ain't never told no lie. You ain't never told no lie. Real niggas say word. I shine different, I rhyme different. Only thing you got is some years on me, man. Fuck you and your sound different. Yes, Lord. I don't really say this often, but this long dick nigga ain't for the long talking, I beast. Started from the bottom, now my whole team here, niggas. Stay down from day one, so I say fuck all y'all niggas. This for me though, I'm just trying to stay alive and take care of my people. Well he's 26, he's from Toronto, he's eloquent, thoughtful, and he's got a massive hit record. This album, I needed to tell a different story. I'm at a very different place in my life. You know, I, I feel I feel great with me. You know, this is the first time that I'm not searching for what I had in the past. I'm not even waiting for what's to come in the future. I mean, I'm excited for it, but the present, the life that I'm living right now is the greatest thing I could ever ask for, and I wanted to make that album, so. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nothing was the same. Um, it's another chapter, it's another piece of the story, and I'm just ready for the next one. If you're ready, I'm ready. Intro. <laughs> How this nigga working like he got a fucking twin, no. Life is sounding crazy, 40 on Martin Scorsese and... Twenty thirteen was a fun year, man. A lot of good music came out this year, bro. Let alone Drake. I'll never forget the buzz surrounding this album, bro. The weight was real. And I'll also never forget that Nothing Was the Same was actually leaked about a whole week before it came out. It was supposed to drop on September 24th, but I believe it leaked around September 16th, with fans on Twitter already praising it. The album would finally release to critical acclaim, debuting at number one again, making it his third in a row, and selling 658,000 copies first week. Me personally, I think this album is just as good as Take Care. It's a classic to me, and my three favorite tracks are probably Furthest Thing, Own It, and From Time. Somewhere between a mistress and commitment, but I stay down, girl, I always stay down. Guess who's it is, guess who's it is, it's yours. What's up, been a minute since we kissed, did you been caught up? Being on some chill shit. 
We go zero to a hundred, nigga, real quick. Always working all the time, and not all the time. I got a shorty named Texas C, and she got a buddy named Young JB, and now you know the deal. All your say, hombre, porque está a tu lado. Yeah. She said she working for Wobbies, but not in the store at the head office. Realize I don't need that shit. I'm a different breed with this shit. That's the man that put me in the shit. If a nigga fuck with him, I put him down quick. Man, 2014, bro. Take me back. Back when I got my first car. Back when I was just having fun and living life, not knowing what was to come. Back when Rich Gang was killing shit. But that's a different topic. <laughs> it's crazy. I remember this concert like it was yesterday. And I'll never forget how dope of a show this was. This was really like a live versus way before versus was a thing. You were able to vote on your phone too on what song you wanted next. Which I doubt it actually worked. But hey, I felt like I was part of it. I remember being on that train on my way there and thinking to myself like, damn. Drake's only been in the game for like five years at this point, And he already going up against one of the goats in Wayne? Bro, that says a lot. Like he already has a bunch of hits. And this is 24 team bro it was so cool to see them go back and forth and then at the end they'd be like wait what are we fighting for to them just playing songs that they got together like right above it and shit like that oh man that shit was gas hey read this kid if you're reading this you're late you're late on February 12th, 2015, Drake would release If You're Reading This Is Too Late out of nowhere on iTunes. I'll never forget the night this dropped, bro. I got a text from a friend like, bruh, Drake just dropped. I'm like, word? No way! Yeah, I know. I bought that shit instantly, fam. Everyone was talking about that shit the next day at work. Like, yo, what's your favorite song on there? I'm like, Six God, or you in the six. He's like, hell no, nah, what you mean, bro? Ten bands. And I'm like, nah, yo, that shit with Travis Scott is fire. Like, there's a reason why many Drake fans consider this to be his best body of work. It debuted at number one and sold 535,000 copies first week. It even made it to Rolling Stone's top 500 albums of all time. The tape went platinum the year it came out and was actually the first rapper to do so that year. Nothing but bangers. 10 bands, 50 bands, 100 bands, fuck it, man. I hate coming through sudden no niggas that I know. Ah, that's the worst, boy. Worst. Having conversations with mama. Man, my life is a mess. Ain't been returning the text. She walk right up to her ass, look him dead in the face and say, you ain't got the juice like that. Always new women, gotta keep a balance. Meek Mill, boy oh boy, do we have to talk about this fam. So one day Meek just felt like going on Twitter and saying this. He ain't even write that verse on my album and if I woulda knew I woulda took it off my album. I don't trick my fans, lol. Then he goes on to say, stop comparing Drake to me too. He don't write his own raps. That's why he ain't tweet my album because we found out. Man, so hold on, we gotta talk about that boy Quentin Miller, who Meek Mill threw his name around in his tweets, saying that he ghost wrote for Drake on If You're Reading This Is Too Late, which Miller denied actually, saying, I am not and never will be a ghostwriter for Drake. I'm proud to say that we've collaborated, but I could never take credit for anything other than the songs we worked on together. And he's actually only credited on four songs off that tape, but it was still a big deal back then and still is to this day. Miller actually says that all that controversy fucked everything up for him. Now, it's it's kind of a long read here, but you can pause the video if you want and read the things he had to say about this whole situation. It's kind of crazy if you ask me. But when I say Drake won the battle, yeah, it's pretty obvious. With charged up first, you boys are getting into your feelings on me. Then aggressively, like two days later, goes back to back 
with Back to Back. Yeah, I learned a game from William Wesley, you can never check me. Which was actually produced by Nav, by the way. This was the first time that Drake ever really made any diss tracks, and he had everyone on his side. The whole public was on his side. He even had all kinds of Meek Mill memes at his concerts and everything, bro. Shit was hilarious. It was looking real bad for Meek, honestly. Especially when he hit him with this line. Sheesh. You love it and you gotta get a world tour. Is that a world tour or your girl's tour? Yeah. Meek would eventually respond with the song Wanna Know. I just wanna know if you ain't right there running through the six shit. Tell us who the folks quit running through the six with. And it was pretty fire, but it was a little too late at that point. Now, yeah, Drake won this battle, but when I say Meek won the war, let me explain why. What's that one thing that people always go back to when they talk about Drake and his career? What's the one thing always looming around like a dark cloud over Drake's career? It's the ghostwriting shit, fam. That question will always linger forever now. Does Drake write his own raps? Whether he does or not, that's not really the point. There will always be speculation. And I know deep down that shit probably still bothers Drake that that went public in the first place. A lot of Drake haters use that as ammo and it will never end. So that's why looking at it now, yeah, Drake won that battle, but that whole controversy will always be there because of Meek. And of course we gotta talk about the smash hit Hotline Bling that he actually dropped the same time as Back to Back. It wasn't until the music video about two months later that made the song go to a whole nother level. It's currently sitting at almost 2 billion views with almost 10 million likes bro. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Drake had to have known that this shit was gonna get memed the fuck out fam. Right. For you to do this shit right here, man, it's gonna, it's gonna change the game. But you gotta realize too, it's like, you know, people are coming to Atlanta and shit, but you also have to realize like, this is too like, it, you're not gonna get the same result if you're not in this building with these individuals right here. Like, yeah. I can say that myself, it's like. Right, right now, this shit, we making us a whole new way. It like changed the game. Everybody yeah. had to go back to the game, but like, Damn, we never ever thought this would happen. Yes, that's the best. This part. shit shouldn't have never happened. Right. <laughs> Who let it happen? <laughs> There's so many questions out of history. What? Get made. Like, you can ask after this, like, nigga, who let this shit happen? Like, <laughs> when did it happen? How did it happen? Yeah. This shit just be for the time. Like, perfect time. What a time to be alive. Shit. What a time to be alive. And for niggas that, like, it's for you niggas to be, like, working all year on your own shit separately and, like, be making like he dropped his mixtape, you drop all your mixtapes, everybody could be separate and niggas to be both hot and then like at the height of niggas being hot, like to come together. Yeah, that that that, that really hasn't happened like just just at yeah, the peak of two, that's it, that's uh, at the like let's figure some shit out. Nah, this shit. This yeah, shit. yeah, nah, it's crazy just to find the time to make this shit happen. In fact, it's done. Shit is done. Shit. Damn, bruh, another project to go number one. Shit is crazy. What a Time to Be Alive released on September 20th, 2015, selling 334,000 copies first week. And when this came out, I said it before in my future documentary, and I'ma say it again. It really felt like Goku and Vegeta fusing up together, bruh. It was like two of the hottest motherfuckers in the game coming together. Admittingly, at the time, I thought it would just be one of those joint projects that kind of just come and go, and people forget about it a few months later, but now that it's about to be six years since it dropped, it really stood the test of time. It still holds up to this day, and sounds like it could've came out today. It definitely felt like more of a future project to me than it does a Drake project, but who gives a fuck? That shit slaps harder than Stephanie on Big Show. What are you gonna do about it? You're gonna cry? You're gonna cry like a baby? Huh? Shout out to Metro Boomin though. This would not have sounded as good as it did if it wasn't for him. You should watch my documentary I made on him, by the way. But my three favorite tracks are probably Jersey, Live from the Gutter, and Digital Dash. You do what you want when you pop it. Yeah. Reporting live from the gutter. I will buy this motherfucker. It's not even a discussion. Woo! These bitches be nagging the kid. Fuck it, it is what it is. Now all these artists behind me represent the artists that I personally respect in the rap game, and I personally want to play. 
So let's start with Drake. And I know there's a lot of rumors going on about us two saying I'm your little brother and all that. But set the record straight. I'm not Drake's little brother, I never have been. Now Drake, yeah. I get compared to you on a daily basis. And it's an honor, I like your music. But I got 10 G's here that says you will love mine. And if for any reason you don't like my music, 10 G's is yours. Now I work hard for my money. My mom always told me that if there was anything I ever really believed in, just go all out for it. This is all I got. Just come play the game, Drake. But keep in mind, I can't lose. Y'all niggas know who to call when you want that fire shit. <laughs> Yo, that video is crazy corny, but I respect it. So there's a lot to digest here, so I'ma just try to keep it simple. Back in 2010, Tory made this video and offered Drake 10K basically just to hear his music. He was young as fuck at the time, and 10K is definitely a lot of money. Shit, I don't care how old you are. 10K just for someone to hear your shit? That's pretty bold. But Drake never responded. They go their separate ways, doing their thing. He kinda sent some subliminals to Drake in this Sway in the Morning freestyle too. Yes, I know these niggas about to act scary T. Yo, nigga, only spitting without the blackberry. So you know Tory himself is from Toronto, right? Whatever. So years go by. It's 2015. Drake is popularizing the term the six, views from the six, the six god, etc. etc. And apparently Tory wasn't having it. Tweeting this out like this whole calling a Toronto six thing, it's not cool, bro. Meanwhile, he was calling Toronto the six himself in a couple songs, but I digress. I'm feeling like I'm really Tory even named his mixtape that came out in December of 2015 the new Toronto. So Drake finally was like, you know what? Alright, I'm gonna respond this time. Dropping the song Summer 16 in early 2016, sending shots at Tory. All you boys in the new Toronto wanna be me a little. You was never gang, 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 gang. You was never one of us. Tory kinda jabbed back on a track with Ferg saying this. I was never ever gang, 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 gang. I was one umbrella mom. But then Tory gets on this interview from Revo and kinda backpedals a bit. Kinda sounding a little scared, not gonna lie. What did he say that was really I mean if 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 people really do believe that it was a, a, a diss or whatever the case it is, I don't know what that man has against me. I'm getting money over here, I'm good, I'm young. I'm finally in a position to feed my family. Please don't try to take that away from me. All I want to do is rap, you know, and I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a fucking Drake fan. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't, like, you know what I'm saying? Drake could diss me 20,000 times. I'd never diss him, bro. Like, I, I'm a, I'm a fan, bro. Like, it is what it is. I have no uh, negativity on my side. But then Tory goes and makes an Uber Everywhere freestyle where he comes at Drake again. You saw I didn't nigga why you see you on the screen. A few months later, Drake gets interviewed and says this. All get get everything, you know, become the biggest artist you can possibly be. Just don't get up there finally and start talking down on me, you know? <laughs> Especially when we have like no interaction or no like just don't don't get your first big shot to speak out and you think it's like the right thing to do is to start like trying to, you know, come for the dawn, you know? It's like that's not it's not gonna work. <laughs> and I don't go for that. <laughs> and that's it. That's as simple as I'm not. It's not it's like on some. Thing. It's not. It's just more like common sense. I don't Ooh. like. Wow. What's the point of that? You know. Mm. If 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 any any time prior to you asked me about anybody here, I'm bigging them up. It's our city, man. You know why would you get up? Why would you get up on a public platform and start being like, ah, oh, I don't. I'm not really with. Nah, man. That's it. And then and then what? Just to what? To come back and start backpedaling and begging it out, like what's the point? You know, it's like I just always I want to I want to be good and positive with everyone in the city, but I, I obviously I expect the same thing, you know, yeah. and that's that's it. I just like like I said, I love seeing people shine. I just I hate when they finally get the platform and they think the answer is like okay, well, because we've never had any we never had any dealings. The answer is to like how I'm gonna get my attention is to mm. attack. It's oh, like, shit. That's not gonna work. Mmm, talk your shit, kid. Talk your shit. At the end of the day, though, Tory's clout chasing kind of worked because he was making some fire music and his popularity to me started rising during this time. They ended up just getting cool a year later anyway, so this was just some fun entertainment, really. Friends, I don't have any more. 
views. Man, when this came out, I'll never forget the day I was on one of those buses that go from the city to Jersey for Six Flags, and it was mad early in the morning, and the album had just came out, so I was like, you know what? This is like an hour and some change ride. Let me hear the whole album. You know when you listen to certain songs, it kind of just puts you in a place or a certain memory? That's what this album does for me, bro. I remember just loving it from top to bottom, except Hotline Bling, to be honest. That shit was annoying, but yeah. The album was a huge commercial success, going number one again, selling 852,000 copies first week. With hits like Too Much, Pop Style, but it sparked two smash hits, bruh, in One Dance and Controller. Baby, I like your style. I think I lie for you. I think I die for you. Which was everywhere that summer. Man, Summer 16 was just different, bruh. Now, yeah, it's gotten its mixed reviews from critics and from fans alike. I think that that kid on that album that I heard sounds real fucking uninspired. That's what I think. I said the other day on this podcast, I miss the Drake that starts the waves, not hops on other waves. And I'll say it again. I miss Drake that pushes the fucking agenda, not let the agenda push him. And that is why I will. Big difference between a Drake and a Hove while they both at the top. Do you guys agree with Joe on this one? I can kind of agree on the starting to ride trends thing because he has tendencies to do so at times, but sounding uninspired? I don't know about that. Why? Because he started a new style and wasn't as aggressive? I don't know. It's funny how my boy and I were talking today about whether or not Views is a classic. Don't kill me, but to me, it's not. It's still a great album, don't get me wrong. He was over here going ham defending that shit. <laughs> I respect it. What do you guys think though? I just feel like when the masses are so mixed on it and you kind of have to hesitate and it isn't like an undeniable undisputed yes hell yeah that's a classic then to me it's like i don't know oh yeah we can't forget about the smash hit work with rihanna and drake Pfft, bro that shit was everywhere this year too rolling 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 how many more shots until you're rolling in the summer of this year until october drake and future would go on tour together for the summer 16 tour i wish i would have went to one of these this shit looks super at the 2016 BET Hip Hop Awards, that boy Drake was nominated for 10 awards, bro. Taking Album of the Year for Views. 2016, if you remember the year, it was a good time. <laughs> I wanna put you in my life. Yeah, yeah. More tune for your head top, so watch how you speak on my name, you know? Plans in my soul of addiction for now, cause I'm falling apart. Before you end up like, whoa, 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 like, whoa, whoa. Demon just got out of can. I gave my bro an advance. All I bitch, you is your mess, ayy. Can't keep my dick in my pants, ayy. Oh. Wow, that's how you feel? That's how you feel? Fuck that? Oh, nice. What that shit? Hey. So now, where do you guys stand? Like, what's good now? I, I still think Drake a fuck nigga. As oh. A, as, a, as a man, no, I'm keeping a blood roll. I, I still think Drake a fuck nigga. Like, I think he, he's a, he's not a man. I think he's a, a bitch. That's a bitch move. Especially when I was in jail facing facing life, bro. You get what I'm saying? If Drake would have came to my, my barn here, you know what I'm saying? That would have made my fucking day. If he, if he would have showed that he he's a hospitable person and that he's really in this shit for the culture, rather than being a fuck nigga, taking my shit, running off with it, and then putting it on his album, then he would have got my kudos. He would have got my respect. I would have let him hop on the remix, take 100% royalty rate. I would have done it. Because mm. I, know, I know I can maintain, you get what I'm saying? That I would have appreciated him for being a real nigga. Alrighty then. I had to showcase that because X is one of my favorite artists of all time, and I think it deserved to be mentioned. It's not really the biggest deal in the world, but this is actually what put me on to X. The whole KMT sounding like look at me shit. I've been a fan ever since. RIP X for real. I, I, I. 
But anyways, More Life was released on March 18th, 2017 to some pretty positive review scores. It ended up breaking all kinds of streaming records for Apple Music and Spotify. It accumulated 61.3 million streams on Spotify alone on the first day and 89.9 million on Apple Music. It of course again debuted at number one and sold 505,000 copies first week, with half of that actually being pure album sales. Oddly enough though, he called it a playlist and not an album. That shit was weird, but a lot of publications and whatnot consider it a mixtape. I don't know man, I consider it an album. It's definitely a fun album and it has some bangers on here for sure. But hold on though, let's not sit here and act like this song right here wasn't the most underrated track of 2017. Change. Facts. I'm Big you take the bait. Cause niggas started talking to me like I'm slowing down. Opinions over statistics. Life is amazing, it is what it should be. Been here for 10, but I feel like a rookie. 901, Shelby Drive, look alive, look alive. Oh. Yeah, home that was that, so I can't be beefing with no whack, nigga. I got the game in a squeeze. Who disagree? I wanna see one of y'all run up a beat. Yeah, that's what they wish yeah. on me. God's paradise. God's paradise. I mean, even all the way up until God's plan, right? Like God's plan was, I sent it to Trippy, and I was like, yo, maybe this could work for your album. And he was obviously, you know, caught up, busy, whatever, doing his thing. And I know people punish him for that. They shouldn't punish him for that, though. You know, sometimes artists, <laughs> artists send a song. I, I, sent, I sent it to him and, you know, whatever, whatever happened, the, the, it didn't really work out that way. And then it leaked. And people forced my hand because they were like, yo, that shit sounds hard. They gon' tell the story, shit was different with me. God's plan. On January 19th, 2018, Drake would drop a two-song EP called Scary Hours with the songs Diplomatic Immunity and God's Plan, with God's Plan becoming one of, if not Drake's biggest song of all time. He then went on to release two more singles for his next album, Nice For What? Everybody get your motherfucking roll on. And I'm upset. I'm upset. 50,000 know my head is disrespect. Scorpion would finally release on June 29th, debuting at number one again and selling 732,000 copies first week. And to me, this shit is fire. This was like all I was bumping 2018 summer, bro. It got some real lukewarm review scores, but I don't know, man. I really fuck with it. There's a few skips on here for sure, but I enjoy the majority of it. <laughs> Nothing else left to say. All of this disorder, no address, and the crown is broken in pieces, but there's more in my possession. Uber X to Hidden Hills, give me something I can feel if they come to Hidden Hills. It was actually pretty dope to see Drake do a Degrassi reunion for the I'm Upset music video, too. Speaking of the I'm Upset music video, though, I gotta talk about my boy X again real quick. So you know X unfortunately passed away on June 18th, 2018, right? And people actually thought, or some people still think, that Drake has something to do with his death. Now I'm not gonna lie fam, with the evidence I'ma show you, it's a little creepy and a bit too coincidental, but hear me out. X had posted this once on his story, right? So that's one thing. And if you listen to the lyrics and I'm upset, it's a bit wild, considering the way X passed away. SMS, triple X. That's the only time I ever shoot below the neck. And on the song Mob Ties, he also says this. Louis bags in exchange for body bags, yeah. It's a little spooky, bruh. To make things even more sus, you know what? I'm gonna let my boy Blackie Speaks explain real quick. Let him know, Blackie. So for the past few days, there's been a lot of conversations on social media regarding the sickle mode music video with, of course, Drake and none other than Travis Scott. You may wonder how does X tie into this whole situation? Well, if you've seen the sickle mode video, then you know that there's an extremely short moment on the video where we see this right here. This is a person that resembles X, who at one point in the video gets crushed by a meteor. Obviously, if you know the history behind the XXX Tentacion and Drake beef, then this is something that you might get really upset by. Look, I'm not saying he had anything to do with it. I'm literally just on the outside looking in observing shit you feel me but we got to talk about this challenge that went pretty viral back then too I woke up this morning in my feelings and I was like I got I gotta let them out Kiki, do you love me? me I swear you gotta feel me before they try and kill me, do you love me? are you riding Kiki, do you love me? 
love me. Pusha T will come for Drake's neck on the song Infrared off his Daytona album on May 25th, which made Drake respond that same day with Duppy Freestyle. I'm in shock. The nerve, the audacity. Must have had your infrared wrong, now your head in a beam. You're not even top five as far as your label talent goes. Your brother said it was your cousin and him than you. So you don't rap what you did, you just rap what you knew. No lie, that song is underrated. And I know Drake was hella proud of himself for like a week after that track. Oh! As he should have, the wordplay was crazy on that. It wasn't until this song though that um yeah, Drake wasn't coming back from this, bro. You mentioned wedding ring like it's a bad thing. Your father walked away at five, hell of a dad thing. Marriage is something that said you never what? had Drake. What? You a winner, but she keep coming. Push is mean. Cleaned her up for IG, but the stench is on her. A baby's involved, it's deeper than rap. Being a child, let that boy come home. Dead beat motherfucker playing border patrol. Ooh, Adonis is your son, and he deserves more than an Adidas press run. That's real. Oh my god. But forget she's a porn star, let her be your world. Oh my god. Put yay in my verses. I'm selfish, I want all of the curses. I'm pre booking the churches. Me versus three her. Wait a minute. I mean, damn, bro. Exposed the shit out of him. So the entire beef behind this could be a whole video in itself, but Drake apparently told Kanye about his son that no one knew about when Ye was helping him on Scorpion. And apparently he went off to tell Pusha, and Drake obviously didn't fuck with that, cause Pusha would go and use that as ammo against him. Plus the song Infrared off Daytona was produced by Kanye. So Drake really wasn't fucking with any of them. Now the next thing is, with Drake. Now, if I wasn't in a medicated state, I might have thought and had the wherewithal to say, hey, Pusha, don't diss Drake on my beat. And I, and I spoke about that and took accountability for that. Now, what I need, what I'm looking for for my spirit to take accountability is the fact that it's people making rumors or thinking that you fuck my wife and you're not saying nothing and you carrying it like that, that don't sit well with my spirit. You know, if I had a girlfriend from Chicago, her name was Renita and then you was married to Rihanna, I wouldn't make no song called Riri. So when you're like, oh, I don't know where it come from, you too smart for that, bro. You know where that come from. Don't make no record with nothing that could be confused. Now I told you, I didn't tell Pusha no information about your baby, baby mama, nothing like that, that didn't come from me. But when you played that record for me in the studio that said, yo, we got some Kylie's, we got some Kendall's, I told you, Travis is your man. Don't make no record like that. That man just had a baby with her. That's gonna be offensive to her. I hit Trav about the ecstasy uh, record and made sure that we was all good, that we know we, we, we family, right? So I did tell you not to do that. So period, it's like, don't speak on none of nobody from my family, nothing that could be even mentioned with my wife. Period. We don't have to talk again. I'm not giving no energy to that, but I'm telling you that. And also, y'all come talk to me. Y'all holla at me. We'll work it out. We'll come to a resolution. After Pusha T made that disrespectful ass song, Drake didn't go on to make a diss track back and was pretty silent for over a year. That was until he got interviewed and asked about Pusha, where you can clearly see that shit was still bothering him. And he admits to taking the L. I have no desire to ever mend anything with that person. Yeah, that situation just went, it just went, it just went where it went. And it's just, there is no, there is no, there is no turning back. It's not like those other situations. At that point, it wasn't even about battle rap or any of that. It was just, the, the, the information was too shocking. It was, on his part, it was a genius chess move. He obviously has no, like, you know, when it comes to me, he's not going to have any, like, morals or respect. So the other elements of the record, whether it be, like, just, like, the shit that he's making up about like, my mom and my dad and all this, like, dumb yeah. shit. Or, you know, obviously the part that, that hit me the most which is like, you know, wishing like that my friend that has an illness like dies. Like though that shit to me is just not really wavy. Like I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm just not really with that. Like tick, tick, tick. How much time he got that man is sick, sick, sick. It just is what it is. There's a point where 
There's a point where you're gonna want to stop rapping. I'm sure I could say something about you know your lovely lady or you know a child or a family member, and you're just gonna want to not really yeah. rap anymore. Yeah, um, so that's just kind of where that's just kind of where I got to. It's just I just had to admit like yo I'm I'm really and when I was making when I was making the record in response, which was a real record. I know people think it's like some myth. It was like on this vinyls beat. And I just found myself saying things that like one seemed really out of character just because I was like really deeply invested in the situation and getting very angry um, and saying things that I, didn't, I don't know if in two years I'd want to hear myself say. I just realized that like nobody cares about this guy. So it's not really much I can say big, better than Drake has a baby. I, he won, you know, he won off that off that uh off that bomb i could understand why drake would not want to respond back to pusha because it probably got so personal that yeah he probably could have came back and went out of character and would have maybe regretted it years down the line but the thing is there's only so much gloating and bragging you can do and say that you're more popular and rich than pusha is but see pusha ain't on that type of time he don't care to be more popping than you nor is he even in the same lane he's on some street shit and drake just isn't so he just took the l and moved on if there's people who have regular jobs who are coming out in the rain, in the snow, spending their hard-earned money to buy tickets to come to your shows, you don't need this right here, I promise you, you already won. But next, a special Grammy performance by- Whoa. Yeah, so it looks like the Grammys had enough of that speech. Damn, why they do my boy Drizzy like that, though? <laughs> but yeah, 2019. What was Drake up to this year? He made amends with Meek Mill and Chris Brown, which was really dope to see. I got more slaps than the Beatles. Foreign shit running on Diesel, dog. Ugh, wow. Chris Brown, dancer extraordinaire. Wow, whoa, whoa. You can lock it down, I can tell by how you trade me. When the Toronto Raptors won their championship, that boy Drake was like, you know what? Fuck it, I'ma drop two songs. Look at my history. I'm trying to see what's different from that guy in the rich of me. I mean, where the fuck should I really even start? I got hoes that I'm keeping in the dark. He then went on to drop his first compilation album, Care Package, on August 2nd, 2019, consisting of songs from 2010 to 2016, with absolute bangers like 5 a.m. in Toronto. Never get the same out of niggas. Guess it's funny how money can make change out of niggas for real. Joe to see freestyle. I'm devoted to making sure that shit goes unnoticed. Swear you niggas is hopeless club paradise and more Wait, I swear you don't know this city anymore then he ends up dropping the song war on Christmas Day getting ready for 2020 you should look up to a man from certain ends with tune on repeat thought he was a bad boy then till man got pinched and man went PC haven't done my taxes I'm too turned up Virgil got a paddock on my wrist going nuts the blues is now kicking and dinner is three Michelin I don't eat red meat but still got beef sizzling yeah Baby Wayne and Ted is responsible for this shit People wanna know what's in my pockets, they don't understand You know what it is whenever I visit Truck to the plane to the truck Truck to the hotel lobby What Drake do? What Drake hit it with? Drake's a right foot fly Left foot fly <laughs> Yeah, the whole world about to be doing this thing like you cross body, got a piece in. Go right foot up, left foot slide. He cross body, got a piece in. Got a dance, but it's really on. So basically, I'm saying either way, we bout to slide. I could dance like Michael J. Son, you and me. That's your side, think it's either you and me. I could get you the passion. Go right foot up, left foot slide. Drake would release Dark Lane demo tapes on May 1st, 2020. It's considered a mixtape with a compilation of songs that were released on SoundCloud or leaked on the internet, as well as some new songs. It was supposed to be sort of a warm-up for his upcoming sixth studio album, Certified Loverboy, that was set to release around the summertime, but we all know that didn't happen. It debuted at number one, selling 223,000 copies first week. It was kind of a mixed bag for many, including myself, but it definitely has some standouts for me, like Time Flies, Baby girl, you know me, still with the dolls that I grew beside. Pain, Hi Williams, little ex. If you don't say it direct, give a fuck. With Cardi giving us that, what the fuck was that verse? But it kind of grew on me, I'm not gonna lie. Sipping that lean, spend 100k New York, I was fucking bored. Whatever the fuck he said. <laughs> and others that I showed before. I'm in the trenches, relax. Can you not pet that little boy in the club? Cause we do not listen to rest. 
Man, Laugh Now, Cry Later is a fucking banger. The song released on August 14th, 2020 as the lead single for CLB. It debuted at number two on the charts and was also nominated for Best Melodic Rap Performance and Best Rap Song at the 63rd Annual Grammy Awards. And being a big Dirk fan, I could honestly say that this feature definitely put him on the top as a okay, I'm here now moment. Cause he was well known before for years, almost a decade. But this for sure was that moment where I would say he took off to another level mainstream wise. We on his ass where it shows at. He get away, we on his ass where he parole at. Dogs, yeah, haven't fallen off, yeah. yeah. Come with a classic, they come around years later and say it's a sleeper. Heart just turned purple, 360 up front, it all comes full circle. We'll see what's about to happen next, okay? Okay, okay, we'll see what's about to happen next. Drake would release Scary Hours 2 on March 5th, 2021. He became the first artist to debut on the Billboard charts at number 1, 2, and 3 at the same time. A few months later, Drake would be invited to the 2021 Billboard Awards to accept his Artist of the Decade speech for the 2010s. Goat shit, fam. Way I ain't having this way, and like the third me go out. Take. The way she with Poppy, man, you would think she's a veteran on remembrance. Stories you told me about him, I could see that it's night and day. He told me the truth. This ain't gonna be the first time that I do numbers on two crutches. See more plaques than two brushes. I love you so much, Drake. Like, Pete, so this, so just let me tell y'all the real shit. I was gonna say, but I didn't want to say it too much. He single-handedly got me out of my writer's block, and I'm never gonna forget it. And I'ma shout it to the fucking world on the mountaintops because that's the real shit that's my hand to god he sent me something and it made me feel so competitive again i was like yo what the fuck am i doing like get like you need to start writing and Thanks. whenever i hear drake and wayne rap it just is always going to inspire something in me but outside of drake's raps it's his like pep talks he'll he'll send one text that'll make me really like reevaluate everything he's a fucking genius as a musical artist but also just as a human like please everybody know that like that's real shit like that's, that's not very sweet like 2K. i swear i've been betrayed yeah drake's been killing it so far with these features man i mean he kind of always does but you know what i mean let me tell you something actors don't rap rappers don't sing rappers don't come from canada where the fuck is Canada? I'm supposed to believe in this light skin, R&B face, crying on every song. Does he even write his own songs? Does he even write his own songs? Does he write his own songs? I promise you, this is never gonna work. This is never gonna last. Even if he had a cosign, even if Lil Wayne cosigned, it doesn't even matter. Okay, best I ever had was a cute one, but he needs another one. Nah, another one. Nah, f that. You know what? Okay. He did it, but can he do it again? No, again. No, again. No, again. You know what? He's just a lucky guy. Are we sure it's luck? Nine number one albums. Six number one songs. A record 232 songs on the Billboard charts. 45 top 10 chart positions, the most of any artist ever. 
Are we sure it's luck? The first artist to debut at number one, two, and three simultaneously. More weeks on the Hot 100 than Elvis Presley, Elton John, Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson. Most streamed artists of all time. 13 Billboard Awards, the most ever in one night. 27 total Billboard Awards, the most wins in music history. A record 431 weeks on Hot 100. Luck is defined as success or failure apparently brought by chance rather than through one's own action. This is far from chance. This is purposeful choices, selfless gestures, relentless hours, and a whole lot of good karma. This is clinical, surgical, militant. Even when they don't want to compete anymore, you find someone to challenge every single time, even if that someone is yourself. It's not luck, my good friends. It's certain destiny. And to you, I want to dedicate this whole one to you. <laughs> no way. Shohei, the way. Oh my, oh my, oh my God. Nigga, it's happy. Oh my God. Thunder, thunder, thunder. I'd be a fool not to mention the debate on Donda versus Certified Loverboy. Everybody talking about when are they going to drop, who's going to sell more, which album is going to be better. The whole back and forth has been fun for hip hop and fun for me personally. Me, I was hoping that Donda would release the same day as CLB, but it didn't turn out that way. Either way, we finally got Certified Loverboy on September 3rd, bruh. What the f album cover is this, bro? You're trash, Brock. Kinda makes me not wanna cop the vinyl for it. Regardless of the cover though, Certified Lover Boy sold 1 million copies on the first. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing, bro. I'm recording this shit the day it comes out. But yeah, the hype has been real lately, especially with all these marketing campaigns slash silly memes taking the CLB style, Drake aligning the Avengers for his album. He must have saw what Ye was doing and was like. I'm off to create. <laughs> As far as the music itself goes, I mean, after listening to it like three times already, yeah, this shit is fuego. Sailing to the edge of my mind. Daddy is not around. My mama is not around. Niggas turn their back on me for no good reason. Type of nigga that can't look me in the eyes, I despise One of those traits in a race, they can't hold me Why I'm so difficult to bat them like a fever in the winter I got women in the phantom I'm uh, too sexy for this sir, too sexy for your girl I wish that's how you call me, that raw shit, that honesty That raw shit, that honesty? <laughs> Fire, I could play the whole shit right now And that boy Drake is coming at Ye's neck on the song 7am on Brittle Path Pause the video, read these lyrics real quick fam I'm curious to see how this album is gonna hold up in five to ten years because we all know how quickly hip-hop evolves and changes but judging by drake's track record yeah i'm pretty sure it'll always be fire drizzy drake rogers aubrey arguably the greatest artist of this generation or even of all time it's been a pleasure listening to his music and all the memories i gained from it and it's been an even more honor to create this documentary on him i look forward to another decade from that man and more success and accolades to come more life to him and with that I say, take care fam.